Hi, and welcome to this new Parsha Shear video series. Hopefully each week I'll be recording a short video share on the Parsha and sending it out to you by email, either on Wednesdays or on Thursdays. We will be studying one commentary of the Sefer or Gidal Yahu on the Parsha each week. I think it's an interesting endeavor to study one sefer, one book in specific, over the course of many Shabbatot or many weeks. There is value, of course, in studying different svarim, different commentaries, and unearthing different approaches to the Parsha. But I think there's also value and consistency in seeing one commentary through Parsha after Parsha, because it's only by doing that that you really get a sense of their approach to Parshanut, their approach to Jewish philosophy, and to commentary, and to the Torah, and uh, start to see some overall picture of what their their philosophy is. So I'd like to try to do that in this series of uh, Shiurim. Or Gedal Yahu is a, a book that was written by Rav Gedalia Shor. Rav Gedalia Shor was uh, one of the great giants of Torah in America in the 20th century. Gedalia Shor was born already in Poland, came with his family to the United States in 1922. Originally, like many Jews coming from Eastern Europe, lived on the Lower East Side, eventually made it to a secondary area of settlement, which was in Williamsburg. And uh, it was in Williamsburg that he met Rav Shraga Feivel Mendelovich, another great giant of Torah in America, the founder of uh, Torah Vadas, really one of the great yeshivas in America, one of the first yeshivas in America, the first yeshiva high schools in America, and uh, he caught his eye and uh, he immediately became a student of his, worked alongside him, eventually actually Rav Gedalia Shor went back to Europe uh, to study in yeshiva as many American boys uh, did, even at that time leading up to World War II. He studied actually ironically in the Kletz, Kletz Yeshiva in Europe with Rav Aaron Cutler before Rav Aaron Cutler himself came to America. After studying, came back to America, eventually began to teach in Torah Vadas, became the Menahel principal and eventually the Rosh Yeshiva of Yeshiva Torah Vadas and left a great impression upon his students. I actually know um, older uh, gentlemen and uh, older rabbi as well who actually studied with him in Yeshiva Torah Vadas and uh, had first-hand exposure to the type of charismatic personality that he was, a person who really cared for his students, who imbued the shir with a real energy and excitement and spirituality, and um, really a very genuine, genuine sense of a love for people and a love for Torah. And I think that does come through in some of his writings as well. He died, uh, as I said, I think I said, uh, in 1979, left behind this, uh, this sefer uh, called Orgedalia, which is on the Parsha as well as uh, on some of the Moedim. I'd like to speak today uh, about the notion of laughter. Laughter takes a very prominent place, both in our Parsha as well as already in the Parsha before it, uh, in, many different, uh, in many different ways. Uh, it starts already in Parsha Lech Lecha, as Avram is told by Hashem that he's going to have a child, Pasuk says, Vayipol Abraham al Panav, Vayitzchak, he fell down on his face and he started to laugh. Vayomer Bilibo, he says in his own heart, Halaben Meash and Ayyvaled, is it possible for me at 100 years old to really have a baby? Vim Sarah Habatishim Shana Teled, and Sarah, 90 years old, will she, be, she, will she be able to have a child? Of course, uh, the concept of laughter continues even more prominently in our parsha, in Parshas Vayera. When uh, the angels or the men come to visit the tent of Avram and Sarah and give the besorah, give the news to Avram that he will have a child from Sarah. And Sarah overhears as she's standing in the ohel, as she's standing in the tent. And the Pasuk says, Vatitzchak Sarah Bekirba Lemor. Sarah laughs internally, or whatever Bekirba means, which we'll see more of shortly, and says, I'm already old, I'm past the age that we can have children, my husband is past that age, how can we have a child? She laughs at that notion. Of course, then uh, there's the reaction that Hashem has to her laughter. Hashem says to Avram Avinu, Lama Sarah Why did Sarah laugh at this proposal that she will have children? Of course, then, not only is there Hashem's criticism, but there's Sarah's response when Avram actually confronts her about the fact that she laughed. Um, she says, I didn't laugh. Sarah I didn't laugh, says Sarah, and we have to understand what exactly that means. So laughter takes a very, very prominent role. Of course, in the very end of the story, after all this is over and Sarah actually has a child, um, Avraham names him Yitzchak, 
And then the story goes forward with the laughter or the tzachok that Yishmael brought into the home of Avraham and Sarah. And of course, Sarah's reaction and the banishment of Hagar and Yishmael. Laughter runs through every real, every real piece of this story all the way until the end. So we have to understand a little bit more about the nature of the laughter. And specifically, I would like to think about the laughter of Sarah. Sarah's surprising chuckle. And I think it's most surprising and actually most uh, complex. Of course, the very notion that, um, that a Nuvia, someone who's on such a righteous high level, uh, would laugh at a proposal that comes uh, about having children is difficult to understand. Many also wonder how Avram Avinu could have laughed, and many wonder further why only Sarah is criticized for laughing and not Avraham, especially when Avram hears the news from Hashem himself that he's going to have a child, whereas Sarah only hears it from angels or from people. So it's difficult to really understand um, why she laughed, why he laughed. So three questions we need to really explore. Number one, uh, why she laughed. Number two, why she denied that she laughed. And Sarah was a tremendously righteous person. And number three, when she laughed. So already you can see there's a complexity to this story. The Chizkuni points out, based on Midrashim, that actually the Malachim came to give the news of Yitzchak's birth, ultimate birth, at Pesach time. And the laughter that we read about, where Sarah overhears the news, doesn't actually occur, according to the Chizkuni, according to the Midrashim, on Pesach. It actually occurs later in Tishrei. In Tishrei, Sarah sees that she's not pregnant yet, Sarah sees nothing's happening, and that's when she starts to question, will I really have a child? And she starts to quote-unquote laugh. Um, and then, of course, the following uh, Pesach, she has her baby, and she becomes pregnant. The Pesach says, V'ashem pakadet Sarah kasher amar, on that Tishrei where she started to laugh in disbelief. And that's why, of course, we read this parsha V'ashem pakadet Sarah, uh, on Rosh Hashanah, very appropriately. That timeline itself lends itself to uh, a simple reading of the Psukim, a simple reading of the laughter of Sarah. Sarah laughed in disbelief at the ability to have a child, not because she was questioning God's abilities, and not because she lacked a faith in God, quite the opposite. As the Ramban points out, and as the Chizkuni, as uh, the Radak, as the Sforno, everybody points out her laughter was perhaps at the people who were giving her the news of her child. She doesn't know, perhaps, that they're even angels, according to the Ramban. Maybe she just thought they're people. And even if she knew, maybe she thought they were Nevi'im, giving her some strange prophecy that she didn't know if she should trust or not trust. She didn't realize that this was a message coming directly from Hashem, it was a message perhaps coming um, from others, from human beings, and uh, something that she couldn't necessarily trust. And so it doesn't display necessarily a lack of faith in Hashem at all, but seems to be actually uh, quite understandable. What's not so understandable is why she reacts to the confrontation about her laughter by denying that she laughed at all. And that's what the Orgad Yahu comes to address. In his commentary, he tries to focus in on that question of why she laughed and why she reacted by denying the laughter, and he does so by focusing on the word in the Pasuk, Bikirba. Vatitzchak Sarah Bikirba Lemor. She laughs inside of herself, so to speak, saying, Will I ever have a child? I'm so old, how could I have a child? And um, what the Orga Dayahu says is as follows Bivadai Shesara. It's impossible that she would outright lie. She's on a very high level. There are thoughts that we have and inclinations that we have as human beings that are so thin, so frail, so faint that we ourselves don't even realize we're having them. So subconscious that we don't even realize that we're having that thought. Until a thought actually comes to fruition, only God knows that thought. Only God recognizes that. We as human beings sometimes don't even understand the thoughts that are in formation until they actually come to fruition and are expressed. There are thoughts we don't recognize. 
וזהו שכתוב, ותצחק שרה בקרבה. That's what it means when it says that she laughed inside of herself. בקרבה דייקה, specifically inside of her. לכן אמרה שרה האמת כשאמרה לא צחקתי. If read in that way, now we understand why Sarah denies her laughter. She didn't know she laughed. Of course she says, I didn't laugh. She didn't realize that she had laughed or that she had this surprised disbelief reaction inside of herself. She didn't recognize that. She never felt it. And he says that there's a reason why she didn't feel it. There's a reason why she didn't sense it. There's a reason why it was so faint. And this is a little bit surprising, but interesting nonetheless. And it comes again from the pasuk of her denial. When she denies that she laughed, it says, Lo tzachakti ki yareya. I didn't laugh because I was afraid. I had yira Hashem. I had a fear of God. And the simple meaning of the pasuk is, no, I didn't express disbelief. Lo tzachakti ki yareya. Rather, I have a great belief, a great fear, a great awe of Hashem. But Dorga Dayao says, maybe it means more than that. I didn't sense that I was laughing. I didn't sense my own disbelief. Because I had this euphoric, grand sense of awe of Hashem. I had such a, a, a radical love and fear of God. I was on such a high level of relating to God that I lost touch with the fine details of what was actually going on inside of me. And that, to me, is a fascinating thought with which I leave you uh, on this Thursday evening. The idea that there are sometimes moments in our life where we focus on the big picture of things and we get so caught up in the emotional experience of life and sometimes even of religion that we don't sense the fine details of what are what's going on inside of us. And that's a dangerous place to be. Because when we lose touch of those fine details of what's going on inside of us, which at the moment might be innocuous, sometimes they could lead down the road to things that are much greater. And if we had only sensed them to begin with, we could have addressed them in a way that they per perhaps could have amounted to nothing. But in the end, if we don't pay attention to them, could amount to something great. They could derail us from the true path of our lives. And that's the difficulty of life, balancing the grandiose, with the fine, balancing the big picture with the small picture and the details inside of it. Sarah ultimately realized that in the end of the day, which is why she calls her son or agrees to the name Avram gives her son Yitzchak, and why she's so sensitive to the tzchok that Ishmael brings into the home. But at this point in the story, it's still so fine that she doesn't recognize it as she focuses largely on Yigurah Hashem in the bigger picture of things. Hope you've enjoyed this video share. I hope you should have a great Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom, and thank you.